What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today is a build update number four, I believe. And I've definitely gotten a lot of stuff done, a lot of pictures, a lot of good videos. And I'm actually on my way to school right now. So if uh, if the shop's open, then I'm gonna go in there, do a walk around, kind of explain some more stuff. I know you guys like these type of videos. Let's get straight into it. I put this head on with these springs, but it's missing a valve. I am so early and I'm whispering because I don't know who is around. But basically, this is my classroom. Someone's gonna walk in on me and it's gonna be pretty embarrassing. Who vlogs at their school? I don't know. Here's a turbo. That's what I said next to in class. I'm gonna see if the shop is open, try to get to my engine. If not, I gotta ask someone to open it, but. I might need this. Garrett. Finally back in the shop and the Subaru is basically about like three steps away from being 100% taken apart and me actually splitting the case. But how my class works is I'm starting on doing head work before I go to the block. So I'm not gonna split the case for probably like a week or so, um, just to kind of finish up the heads. Basically what I did yesterday is I completely took apart the heads. My valves are right here. And here are both of the heads, passenger and driver. Obviously you can tell the valves are out. And also, Basically every car company is gonna label everything that they have, so let's see here. Well, it's not focusing, but basically there's an E on these guys, which obviously is for exhaust, and an I on these guys. And typically, intake valves slightly larger than exhaust. This is what my head is probably going to look like once it's clean, because that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing today, is just putting this in the hot tank, getting it cleaned up, and this is what in a head looks like 100% disassembled. All four camshafts, buckets for the intake and exhaust, both sides, head bolts, that's like the camshaft covers over here, springs, retainers, literally everything. Another couple things that I could point out, the exhaust manifold bolts up right here, so this is the bottom of the head, and this is the top of the head, this is where the intake runners go. Now I know I probably went through all that stuff pretty fast, so what I'm gonna do is basically just get some panoramic shots, and then when I go home, I'm gonna do the sit down, kind of explain everything step by step, so I'm gonna catch you guys at my house. Okay, just kidding, before I go to my house and explain stuff, um, I thought it'd just be nicer to do kind of just a walk around. This is one of the heads. 100% taken apart. I like how it just says Japan Subaru. Everywhere. Alright. So I'm finally back at my house and I got my phone right here. Got some good pictures, some good videos. And I'm going to try my best to describe, point out, and show you the removal and disassembly of EJ25 heads. So I basically took uh, as many pictures as I could and uh, unfortunately I couldn't get my GoPro to school. I have failed and I really wish I did because I think it would have been really cool. But um, as far as reassembly, I'm for sure going to have the GoPro freaking strapped to my head, mark my words. And I feel like that's kind of more important because as far as disassembling stuff just in general, you see a bolt, you unscrew it. It's not that like hard. I w obviously reassembling something, you have to know how to do it. So um, I think that's gonna be the more important part. And I know that I'm not going to forget. I will freaking strap that thing to my head and put it on and kind of just give you guys a point of view of me assembling the head, assembling the block, stuff like that. So now let's just get straight into the pictures. Okay, class is in session, pay attention. So, what we're looking at now, um, I don't know if I went over this in the last video, but I just really want to do a nice recap and uh, basically to where I am now. So, first things first is valve cover needs to come off. And once the valve covers come off, it's a few bolts just all around the perimeter. Um, you'll unveil the camshafts. There's an intake, which is the one on the top, and then there's the exhaust, which is the one on the bottom. And there is eight screws total holding both of those guys on. Four for each. 
Um, the way I would do it is uh, unscrew one on like the left side, uh, upper left, then like bottom right, then boom, boom, kind of like a star pattern, like you're doing your wheel, stuff like that. Um, so then once all those guys are loose, you can take the entire assembly off, including the caps, and once those camshafts come out, it will look like this. And under that, you will see, actually it won't look like that, there's going to be buckets. Um, and basically what those look like, I'll show you later. Actually, I might have shown you that earlier in the video. Anyway, right below the camshaft, there's going to be buckets covering the, uh, the valve springs. So once those buckets come out, that is what it's going to look like. And the following photo is going to be all four of my camshafts laid out and also kind of like the cover and caps over to the right side. And here's just a picture of the head, still with the springs, retainers, still in it. And now let's get into the disassembly of the actual head. Okay, wait, before that, let me show you a couple pictures of what the block looks like at this point, now that the head is off, so you can see the pistons. And there you go. Okay, just kidding. The order of these pictures are not what I thought. So the next picture is going to be the bottom of the engine where the oil pan is and the oil filter. Now, I needed to take this off in order to get my block basically bare. And just like I said in the beginning, it's when you're disassembling something, it is way easier than reassembling. It's just, it's mindless. You just see the screws and you just undo it, right? So as far as the oil pan goes, there's basically just a bunch of like 10 mil or 12 mil all the way around the perimeter. Once you get all those out, it is RTV'd on, I think. Basically, that means you need to find somewhere to pry. There's a couple spots, pry down, there you go. And once the oil pan comes off, you'll see the oil pickup. And I need to say thank you or shout out to, I think his name is Stormtrooper, but not my friend Stormtrooper, it's a different one. He said that he was gonna get a Killer B uh, oil pickup. And now I'm actually gonna end up buying one of those. He said he was gonna get it in one of those AB $10,000 part challenge videos. He said he wanted one for his Subaru. I found out they're actually really good. So I'm probably gonna get the Killer B oil, the baffle in the pan and also the oil pickup. Anyway, off topic. Uh, but yeah, basically what we're looking at now is the oil pickup where the rag is wrapped around. And now we can move into the actual disassembly of the head. Okay, so the video that I'm about to show you that's gonna pop up here is, let me kind of explain it before I show you. Basically what this quote unquote machine is, even though it's not really a machine, I don't really know. But what it does is it depresses the spring uh, and wh the way I'm actuating that little downwards pressure is by my foot. So my foot's moving down, pushing down this rod essentially that's pushing on the outside of the spring. And when that spring compresses, I could take out these little things called keepers. Now there's two of them. And th once those keepers come out and I take them away, then the spring can come up with the retainer on there. And then that's what I take out. Hopefully that made sense, but let's watch the video and see if it can make some more sense. So I push down and I have a little magnet and I take out the first keeper and I believe there's still one in there. So I, yep, then I take out the second keeper, then I release the thing with my foot, get that rod out of the way, and I think I'm gonna grab the spring right now. Boom. And basically there are, there are four springs for each cylinder, two exhaust, two intake, and the springs are, are actually, what's under that spring is uh, actually the valve. So if, you, if you're following me, I'm very impressed. Low key, I needed a cracker break. I'm trying to get mentally prepared before I attempt to explain how the entire valve train works. Give me one second. So let me try to walk through this last video and then I'm gonna try to explain what the purpose of the springs are, what the purpose are the retainers, the keepers, the actual valve. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try my best. So we're gonna watch this last video right now. I'm gonna push on the stem of the valve. It's going to come out. This is like where the combustion chamber is. I'm gonna pull that guy through. And that's what I did for uh, obviously all eight of them. And I'm putting them in order from where they came out from front to back and also the exhaust and the intake valves because when you're disassembling an engine, you want to be very, very organized. Now, let me try to explain. All right, these freaking crackers are bomb. I am not gonna lie. No eating on the job, okay. So let's go back to the very first picture. Now what we're looking at here is two camshafts. Again, 
Top one is the intake, the bottom one is the exhaust. Now, let's go to the, the very basics. Essentially, the crankshaft is spinning at a certain RPM, and both of the camshafts are spinning at half of the RPM of the crankshaft. Fun fact. Now, as the camshaft is spinning, if you notice in the following picture, there are lobes on the camshaft. And those lobes are what are what is acting on the buckets. And right behind the bucket is technically the keepers, retainer, spring, and the valve. And that valve is being pushed open and then closed. Open and closed. And essentially what's happening is the camshaft is spinning. Those lobes are rubbing against, let's say this is the bucket. This is the camshaft. Camshaft is boom. And when, the, and when it's spinning like this, rubbing against the camshaft, the camshaft, obviously the lobe goes out. So when that lobe hits, the lobe on the camshaft is rubbing against the bucket. The bucket is what's compressing the spring. What, and then the valve is also being pushed open, allowing air and fuel to be injected into said combustion chamber. And then as far as the exhaust goes, it does the same thing. It opens up, but that's getting the basically the burnt fuel and air back out. I think, I think I explained that okay, but then again, I am in school for this, so I don't know everything, I don't know perfect terminology, but that was basically the best that I could do. Basically, the camshafts, open and close valves. Boom. Okay, I need to get some more of these freaking crackers. Oh, bomb. So, if you couldn't follow today, I will again try to explain this in my next videos of basically how an, en how an engine works because clearly, if you can't tell, I am very fascinated by it and uh, I wouldn't be making these videos and or be having fun making these videos if I didn't actually like it. So I'm really stoked that I like what I'm doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace out.